Tango Factory Outlet is one of the most popular REITs among individual investors. And it's pretty simple to understand why. They own outlet centers that you might have visited. They pay a relatively high dividend yield of around 5%. They have an investment graded balance sheet. They trade at a relatively low valuation of around 10 times FFO. And they've been growing rapidly lately as we emerge from the pandemic. But despite that, I'm not buying it. And I actually think that's one of the least attractive REITs in today's market. Hey everyone, this is Yossi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you five reasons why I wouldn't invest in Tango Factory Outlet. Reason number one. I fear that outlet centers will be the most negatively affected by the growth of e-commerce. And this is because in most cases, they are located in more remote areas where people have to drive to. They also mostly focus on fashion. And finally, their layouts are a lot more difficult to adapt to other non-retail uses. So far, people were willing to drive half an hour to get to their nearest outlet center because they thought that they could get better prices there. But this really isn't the case anymore today. Now you can get comparable or better prices online with same day free shipping. And there are also a growing number of discount retailers like TJ Maxx that are opening stores in more convenient locations nationwide. And so it simply isn't enough anymore to compete just on prices and outlet centers need to adapt to this changing environment. But unfortunately, I think that they're gonna have a really hard time adapting because like I said earlier, they are located in more remote locations and their layouts uh, don't really allow for other non-retail uses. Class A malls, on the other hand, are much better positioned here because they are typically better located in urban growing areas. And on top of that, their layouts are also a lot more flexible. So you can, you can include things like entertainment, services, uh, even office space in the form of co-working and lots of other non-retail uses. And so already now we are starting to see a divergence between the results of Tanger Property Outlet and a Class A mall REIT like Simon Property Group. Um, if you look at the, the results of 2022, uh, Tanger Factory Outlet um, has seen the sales per square foot of its properties actually decline in real terms. On the other hand, the sales per square foot of the malls of Simon Property Group have actually grown very significantly. And so we're already seeing that outlet centers are starting to have difficulties in today's environment. And I think it's only gonna get worse. And unfortunately, they will have a hard time to adapt. Reason number two, Tanger has more than half of its leases expiring over the next three years. And unfortunately, this is happening right as we enter a recession potentially a pretty severe one. And so this is a very significant risk for the company because it will have to renew a very significant amount of leases during a recession when sales per square foot will probably go down and retailers will have a tough time staying alive. Reason number three, Tanger is just shy of losing its investment grade rating. Right now, its rating is triple B minus, which is just above junk and I think that all it will take is a recession, slightly declining rents and an occupancy rate, a few lease defaults, and credit agencies will probably start considering another downgrade. Reason number four, interest rates have surged lately. I think that this isn't a problem to most rates because leverage is today at an all time low, maturities are long, even Tanger, its leverage really isn't that high. Its LTV is around 40%. It has no maturities until 2026. But I think that the market forgets about different ways how rising interest rates can impact Tanger's business. Firstly, a lot of its tenants are retailers that are today over leveraged. The pandemic forced, to take, forced them to take a lot of debt to stay alive and while this was fine with the low interest rates, now it's becoming problematic as rates rise and we go into a recession. So we could see an increased amount of lease defaults in the coming years. And then secondly, uh, historically, Tanger has grown a lot by developing new properties. But this is also now becoming a lot more difficult with the higher interest rates. 
Um, at the very least, it's going to become less lucrative and it's going to be more difficult to complete these projects. Reason number five, uh, our last reason and perhaps the most important one, Tanger is today priced at a higher valuation than Simon Property Group, which we think is actually a much higher quality REIT. I'll put a table on the screen, uh, but there you'll, you'll see that Tanger is priced at a higher FFO multiple. It's also priced at a lower dividend yield than Simon. And that's despite Simon having an A-rated balance sheet. It also owns class A malls, which have, in our opinion, more defensive fundamentals and much better growth prospects. And so here you have to ask yourself, why would you invest in Tanger, which owns riskier properties that have lower growth prospects, also has a, a worse balance sheet with a lower credit trading, when you could just invest in Simon Property Group today at a lower valuation? And so that's all I had to say on this topic. Uh, thank you very much to all of you for watching till the end of this video. I would really appreciate it if you would consider liking and subscribing. And finally, if you want to learn more about my latest read investments, uh, feel free to also follow me on Twitter. I'll put a link uh, in the bio. Uh, I post there my, my latest investments in real time with my followers. Thank you very much.